Hi friends, today I am going to be making this cute little card here. I was watching the Disney movie last night and saw these cute little penguins and I thought, oh my gosh, that would be so cute. So I thought we would draw and paint that today. And I'm working with these uh, watercolor cards, these Strathmore cards, I love them. I've shown them to you quite a few times before and I'll get that link for you and uh, you can take a look at those if you want. I'm also going to be using, you could either use your Degados. Uh, as you know, these are those student grade paints, all round tips. You get like 10 of them. I've been using them for about eight months. They're great, still have good points. They're very springy, love them. But today I'm going to be using probably my eight and my six round. This is actually the six long round just to get into some of those kind of more detailed spots and uh, my eight for the rest of the painting. I will also be using my My Lang paints. Uh, today I'm using my bigger set, my 48, so we can maybe play with these metallics. And uh, such a great paint set for you beginners if you don't want to invest in the um, more expensive Windsor Newton. I know I can't afford to paint with those every day. Uh, these are great. They're really creamy. They're vibrant. I'm now refilling them with the Paul Rubens tubes and really love them. I might also just use that mirror series, uh, the metallics you've been seeing me use. So I'm going to go ahead and spray those as well. And we'll just get those activated and ready. I've already sprayed my other watercolors. And don't forget your two wells of water. I'm using my ceramic meden. I love, if you've ever knocked over, somebody told me a story about this this morning, your containers of water, total nightmare. So I've got my wash and my rinse and my napkin to blot off. And then I think what I'll do is, no, I'm not going to use my ink. I'm going to use my pencil and I'll just kind of guide you through drawing this because it's quite easy. It's almost kind of like a little snowman the way I'm drawing it. So what I did first is I drew his head and it's almost like an egg shape. So I came all the way down here and then I drew a little bit of a heart shape on the inside here and mine is in perfect guys and that's okay you can make him kind of wonky I gave mine a little tuft of hair but you could put a little beanie on him or her whatever you want and then some little eyebrows and her eyes with the circle inside here another eye in a circle and then I just did <coughs> excuse me a little <coughs> excuse me guys I'm still recovering from my cold a little triangle for her nose <coughs> gosh excuse me guys <coughs> and then after that I so you've got this kind of egg shape here and then I just came out and I drew her little body, which is a little wider at the bottom. And then her feet, which is like a C, and an upside down C, and then three little toes. And I'm drawing mine a little bit darker than you might want to because I wanted you to be able to see it. The next thing I'm gonna add is I put a little scarf on mine. So I just, started a little ways up on her neck and then created this little scarf and the little center there we go these little pieces that hang down there we go and then her little flippers come out at the side I've seen people put little 
uh, maybe gloves on there. It's kind of up to you. So there's your drawing. I also will have this little drawing for you available in my free drawings in my on my website. So if you haven't gone there, I'm in the process of doing that. The next thing I'm going to do before I paint is just use my kneaded eraser, which is also in my supplies in my Amazon store. And I'm going to lighten this up now. I really kind of darkened it so you could see what I was drawing. And I love these kneaded erasers because they don't damage the paper. If I'm erasing like this, rubbing the paper, it can tend, if you're using a paper with texture, to kind of ruin that nice textured finish. Sorry if my camera's uh, shaking there. So I like these erasers because look at that. It lightened everything up and it didn't damage my paper. All right, so let's go ahead and get started painting her. I think the colors, I almost was going to paint her like a pinky color, but I think I'm gonna paint her, oh, let's see. I think I wanna use these, uh, maybe that turquoise blue again. So I will go ahead and do that. What I'm gonna do first is paint around the outside of her head here. And I think this turquoise blue I have in here actually has some of that metallic in it from yesterday. So let's go in and you know what, actually take, let's just step back a minute. What I'm gonna do first is wet this area because I want this to be kind of washy. So I'm gonna wet the outer circle, just wetting it, not puddling. And that way my paint will kind of flow in there. And now I'll go in and just lay down that paint. Yeah, this paint has some uh, metallics in there from yesterday, which is fine. Because as you know, I'm pretty obsessed with those metallics. And then I'm just gonna push this around, let it go into all those areas. There we go. So we've got her little face. I might go in while that's dark and just use a little bit of a darker blue in there. Maybe even add in just a touch of Payne's gray to darken it up. And this is just to give it some interest here and there. So I'm just kind of touching in and then we'll let that spread. So I'm gonna wash and rinse my brush and I might just go back in there and you could actually even blow onto your painting or however you want to kind of spread that around. I might lift a little bit out and then let's go on to her cute little belly. So let's do this a different approach. So this one I wet. This one, let's just go in with a very light wash of that blue. So this is where this six long round comes in really handy because I can get into these tiny little spaces. It's got such a great point on it. I'm gonna go around her tiny little feet. And if you guys have that uh, mirror metallics I've been talking about, it's actually mixed in here from my paints from yesterday and I really like it. And it kind of makes sense. She's out in the snow. So she's kind of glistening. And I'm just gonna keep going around. Until we get her all filled out here. There we go. Wish you could see. I'm also gonna do her little flippers here. There we go. 
do our other little flipper. This six round really does have a great point on it, by the way. Okay. There we go. Okay, she's pretty well filled in. Now while she's wet, what I wanna do is just go around the outside with maybe a little bit of, let's go in with just a tiniest bit of a light orange wash. And that's a little brighter than I wanted. And I just wanna create a little bit of a background here. So I laid that down and now I'm going around the edges and just fading away that orange line. Let me turn my card around. So I don't wanna to touch into her with my paint because it will bleed in to that blue paint. And then just going around the edges with a damp, clean brush and pulling that out. And it kind of gives us this effect of a background. There we go. Going around our little tuft of hair there. And then I'm going to use, I wish I had my tissue, but I don't, and kind of dab some of that off. You could even um, maybe use some salt in there. To get some effect, some kind of cool effects. Matter of fact, I think I'll go grab my salt because I think that could be really a fun effect and could maybe look like some snow in the background. So let me go grab that really quickly for you. One second. And we'll come back and do some more on her. Okay, and I've got this salt. I think you would maybe even refer to it as rock salt. It came with some little frozen pretzels I had. Now, because my background isn't real dark, this may not show up a lot, but I'm gonna put that in there anyway. Just do a little bit of splatter. There we go. Be a little bit on the other side. go okay so let's go on and, and we'll color in her little feet here let's pick up our cad orange there we go and we'll do a light value meaning a little bit more water than paint and just color in her little feet Now you could really add whatever you want to her. You could have her sitting with some little flowers, put a little snow cap on her head. I might go into that with just the tiniest bit of brown on the tip of my brush. Just add that in. Okay, now for her little nose, we'll use that orange as well. So I'm gonna go in and now rinse and wash my brush. And I'm gonna go in with a damp brush and just do that push and pull. There we go. Okay. I think that's cute. All right, let's go in and paint her little scarf. I think the color of her scarf I will do Oh, let's see. <clears throat> let's, well, let's do pink. 
I just can't seem to get away from that pink, can I? Now that was a little bit too much. There we go. And this, if you're using your Windsor Newtons, is probably going to be like your Opera Rose, maybe your Quinn Magenta, as you know, my favorite, favorite color. And we're just going in and painting with a light wash all of these little areas, maybe dabbing in while it's wet, letting it kind of spread. There we go. And I just use the side of my brush right there just to get a wider brush stroke. And paint the other side of her little scarf there. Add in some dark pink, just for some interest. I'm going to wash and rinse my brush, just lift some of that out, like that, oops, there we go, Just dropping in a little bit of that darker pink to look like maybe some folds in her little scarf. I don't want to get too detailed here, but I like, as you know, I always say if you can add in a variation of all of the different values so a light value a dark value I think that makes for so much more of an interesting painting there we go so there we go now for her face I think what I will do let's just since we've been playing so much with these fun q-tips I'm just going to get my q-tip a little bit wet and I want to create a maybe an orange and a pinkish hue and then let's go in and just make a dot for her little cheek. I want it to be more on the pinkish side. There we go. Maybe a little bit bigger. There we go. And then we'll do her eye, and this is where, boy, this six long round is gonna be really handy because I need to get a little bit of detail here with her eyeball. So let's go into our Payne's Gray, and I'm gonna use the tip of my brush, so very light pressure. This is where your brush strokes come in handy. And I'm holding pretty close up and I'm just going to use the tip of my brush and kind of draw out her eye. There we go. And color that in. There we go. Look how cute she is. And so simple, you guys. And then Let's make her little tiny eyebrows. So here you could use a pin. If you don't feel that good with a brush, you could definitely use a pin here. And then for her little tuft of hair, I think I'm gonna make it blue too. But maybe a darker blue. There we go. 
And again, you could add a little hat on her. You could really do whatever you want. Now, I want to give her body a little bit more roundness. So what I'm going to do is go in with my Payne's Gray mixed with that blue. And I'm going to just start highlighting a few things. So I've got a pretty light value. Now, if you're not sure what value you have on your brush, always have that little swatch sheet next to you. And that's the exact value. I want it to be kind of sheer. So that's about 80% water, 20 paint. And I'm gonna go in with the side of my brush. Now see, that was a little too light because I can't even see it. And just go right around the outer edge of her tummy. And then I'll wash and rinse my brush and soften that line. So I'm just adding in these dark areas where the shadowing might be. So let's pull that up again. I'm gonna turn my page, tap off, and just go with the, kind of the tip in the side of your brush. It's always better, see how really my first stroke doesn't have a whole lot of paint on it, but that's okay, I'd rather have that than too much, because folks, we can always go darker. So side of my brush, there we go. And it's just this beautiful glaze. I can still see the sparkles showing up through it. And then softening that line with a thirsty or a damp brush, there we go. Now you can always drop in a little bit more paint along those edges. Like that. And let it kind of blend in. But look at how that created this beautiful curve and depth. And then I'll add some darker colors down here. Blot and rinse my brush and just soften that line. There we go. Okay, now I feel like all she needs is maybe a little bit of depth in her wing. Or I don't know if they call that a wing, her flipper. So I'm going to add in a tiny bit under the scarf. Now that has a little bit too much paint, so I'm just going to tap off. And then pull that down on the inside of her wing. Now wash and rinse my brush. Got just barely a damp brush and I go in and just soften that edge. There we go. Soften that edge. And look how cute she is. Now she's got some real depth to her. She looks like she's got that roundness might add a tiny bit of shadow underneath her little scarf. Just like that. And with a damp brush, just, you can do that push and pull technique. And there we go. Let's do her other arm here tapping off some of that paint. Go under the scarf for a little bit of shadow and then down along the inside of her flipper. I'm gonna soften that line or push and pull. Now, I don't know if you could see that on camera, but what just happened is my scarf was still wet, so it bled into that blue. So I'm gonna pick a bit of that up. That's okay, I'm not gonna stress about it. There we go. All right. Might just add a tiny bit of darkness along the edge here. Then wash and rinse my brush. Soften that line. And it's just creating that curve or that feeling of a curve when you darken the edges. 
just a little bit of darkness, wash and rinse your brush. And then just touching into the tip of that. And this is just little, little subtle things, but they make a big difference. softening now see this a little bit of that pink went in there because that pink wasn't quite dry but I think we're about done folks and I think she's really cute if you wanted to use a little pen this is just a big pen pentel and add some little eyelashes but what a cute kids card this would be and for her little eyebrows, something like that. And there you go. I think we're about done. And I just think she's adorable. I'm just adding in some little darker areas. Remember, you know, when you're painting, how I can typically tell more of a beginner is they don't have all the different values. So making sure, you know, if you're using this blue color, you've got this value, which is a mid value. You've got a dark value, and then you've got that lightest value. Well, I went a little too light. So you've got three different values, and to check your work and make sure you have all of those values in there, and that's what's really gonna make your painting really interesting and fun. Now, because this is still kind of wet, I could go in and touch into that. Just to make it look like some background there. I know some of you like that background. You could go into your metallics and do a little splatter which I tend to be doing on all of my paintings. Oh, and I, I think on this one, this little card, I'm gonna do a little border. So let's go in with our turkey blue and some of our paints gray. Oop, that got a little too much. Get some more turkey blue there, there we go. And sticking with the six round, I'm going to go in. Now, if you don't have a steady hand, you can always use a ruler. And I really don't, you guys, but I drew out this fun little border. I'm just going to go in and draw that border. And sometimes when it's not perfect, I think that looks kind of cool. It looks like, oh, they made this by hand. So resting your hand here, let me move this out of the way and going in, and if I'm resting my hand and I'm holding closer up to the ferrule, I have more control. So just drawing this little line, moving my entire wrist downward. And we keep going. There we go. Now, as you can see, I don't do this perfect, but you know what? I think that's kind of the charm of making these cards by yourself. They're not perfect. They're perfectly imperfect. And look how cute she is. Now, she would have definitely been cute with a little um, snow hat or something like that. I think would be really adorable and making sure you're adding in those darker areas and then I've got a little bit of my shimmer and metallic on her so have fun with her I'll have her the little drawing but I really think you could draw her quite easily and make her unique for you and I'm gonna be sending this to one of my grandkids so I hope you all give that a try and um, make sure and check out my website for the free drawings. Okay, everybody, thank you.